I spent 28 years, 7 months, and 23 days in the United States Marine Corps. I went to a lot of places, met a lot of people, and had a lot of adventures. Now, I'd like to be able to say that all the success I've had has been because I'm some sort of super awesome, hard-charging, leatherneck shock troop. But that's not the case. I was able to make it this far with the help of a lot of great people, some of which I want to point out to you. But I can only do that by putting them into context of my whole story. So let's stop, rewind, and please bear with me for a few minutes while I tell my Marine Corps tale. I went to boot camp on February 7, 1989, after having enough credits to graduate a semester early from high school. I was 17 years old and had no idea what was about to happen, but I knew I would rather die than not make it to graduation. The next six months went by pretty quickly, and before I knew it, I was joining my first fleet unit. When myself, Chris Durst, and Chris Wood showed up as 7th Marines, which was still at Camp Pendleton, by the way, showing my age there, it was like one of those cliched prison movies when the fresh fish show up. Uh, I actually think our platoon invented hazing in the Marine Corps. But luckily, the impending move out to 29 Palms and then Desert Storm provided enough distraction to make it an interesting tour. We had quite the collection of characters in our platoon, from hardcore rednecks to angry young black men, crazy white supremacists, goofball weirdos with crazy theories, and a mix of really horrible NCOs with a few good ones mixed in. I wasn't a model marine by any stretch, but I learned a lot and we had a great time and adventure in Desert Storm. Blake Birdwell, Wes Elkins, Nick Clark, Chris Wood, and Jerry Robertson really made it bearable living out in the stumps. And I want to thank Sergeant Williams, Sergeant Chris, and Corporal Hamilton for setting a great example of what an NCO could be. I went to Okinawa next, and there I met a guy by the name of Vince Kaiser. He, he probably doesn't know it, but I really idolized the guy. He was everything I wanted to be as a Marine and as an NCO, and I always felt like I was two steps behind him trying to keep up. If it weren't for him being there and unknowingly pushing me to better myself, I'm quite sure things would have turned out differently for me. He made me realize my potential and know that I could do really well in the Marine Corps. And, and that was just through his example. I only hope that I ever impacted someone as much as he impacted me. Thanks, Gunner. I love you, brother. From there, I went to 1-8 and got promoted to sergeant. And I was still trying to figure out how to be an NCO. I made a lot of mistakes, and I have a lot of regrets to this day of how I treated people that I worked with. I was an arrogant, cocky knucklehead who really only had one leadership style. But I suppose you have to go through that in order to be better. Thanks to Ken Etringer, Gary Soa, and especially my awesome spades partner and European libo buddy Philip Wells, who crashed a Romanian wedding with me in service alphas when we went up into the Black Sea. We got drunk as skunks at the head table and danced with the bride and ended up giving our shooting badges away as wedding gifts. <laughs> and those days were fun. Oh, and we stole popcorn during a vert rep. Sorry about that, Squids. After cross-decking and going to 2-8 for another deployment, I was ready to get to the drill field. I'll be honest, I was made to be a drill instructor. I was really, really good at it. And that's just not braggadocious. That's a fact. I really want to thank my senior drill instructors for putting up for the crap that I got them into. But I think you have to ride the edge a little as a green belt, so no apologies. I wasn't a real good senior drill instructor, mostly because I didn't want to be soft or whatever. But, you know, it got me meritoriously promoted. So I was happy about that. Rod, will you fetch us another player, please? Sure thing, Bob. William Sweeney. Come on now. You're the next contestant on the prize. We are ready. Yep, that happened. 
The one and only time I briefly thought about getting out of the Marine Corps was at my next duty station at 3-5. Peacetime Marine Corps sucks, and we were in full peacetime mode. It was also the first time I deployed after being married with a kid, which was a whole different deal than the four deployments before that. I did learn a lot from First Sergeant Sablon, though, so thanks to him. Off to AMOI duty in New York, which was a blast. Thanks to Jeff Ballard and Joel Davis for being some cool cats to hang out with up there, and to Scott Smith and Mark Aleko for not letting me burn at OCS when that ass of a CO wanted to fire me and send me home. Excuse me for trying to kick stress on candidates. Looking back, I think the best and the worst times I ever had in the Marine Corps were next in 2-8. Dos Ocho. Team Ginormous. Terminating with extreme prejudice. Being a company gunny is the best job in the Marine Corps. That's a fact. Just write it down. I met some of the best Marines the Marine Corps has or ever will produce, and I learned so much from so many. Almost four years and three deployments, and for the most part, we had the same crew. It was just awesome. I really want to thank some people. First, all the Marines in Golf Company. From the best to the worst, I know you thought I hated you all, which I did, but with genuine love, if that makes any sense. You men are everything that is right with this country, and even though most would consider you misfits, I consider you brothers for life. To John Donald, my jackass police sergeant, man, we spent a lot of time together in a lot of hard times and a lot of hard places. I'd ride the Death Express to hell and back with you, brother, with some coffee from the coffee mess of death and some Dave Matthews blasting from the boombox of death. George Flynn, you, sir, are an awesome Marine officer. I'm glad I was there at your start. I'd follow you anywhere. Rob Beeth, thank you, man. You were a huge influence on me, and thanks for letting me be me. Miles Thorne, Larry Rosenfeld, perfect battalion sergeants majors. And my little buddy, Tim Haney, thanks, man, for all the advice over the years, and the fun, and the stories, and the laughs. But especially Billy Squires. From the time we were in 2-8 together and every time something has come up since, you have always been available to be my sounding board with awesome advice and counsel. Now, people don't know, but I got my own advisor counsel. Billy Squires, Tim Haney, Doug Berry, Joe Breeze. There hasn't been a move I have made without consulting these great minds. So thanks, my friends. Now, I don't know whose life soundtrack would be complete without at least one song from one of the greatest bands to ever pick up instruments. Look at this photograph. I got orders to Paris Island after 2-8. Man, I hated that place. Luckily, it was shared misery because I served with some great fellow first sergeants. Haney, Barry, Doug Schaefer, J.P. Corville, Reggie Baker, George Aurelio. Thanks for sharing it. When I got selected to Sergeant Major, I went to the Air Wing, and I could not have asked for a better tour. Now, people who have never been in the wing think it's full of skaters and slackers, which couldn't be further from the truth. Those Marines work hard, day in, day out. Thank you so very much to Blade Hackett and Grimace Grinnells for allowing me free reign as your Sergeant Major. I hope I served you well. To my quarterback, Marty Bruce Martin, thanks for indulging an old man and allowing me to be part of so much fun football. And same to Jason Shirley for not cutting me from the softball team even though I sucked. And of course, the other three of the Funky Fresh Four, Damian Deloach, Gary Golubeth, and Martin Brannigan. That took balls, man. And whenever I hear that song, I smile from ear to ear. And to my gun runners, y'all are an awesome crew. I learned a lot from you, and I really appreciate it. Take this job and shove it. I went off to recruiting duty, and I just want to say to all the recruiters I serve with in Frederick, thanks for all your hard work. I have often said that I would not have been able to do what you do. That is some tedious, thankless, difficult work. Hands down, toughest job in the Corps. 
And sorry to all those wives with the stickers on the back of their car that say otherwise, but recruiters have you beat. To both my sets of parents, brothers, sister, grandparents, in-laws, aunts, uncles, cousins, and all the rest of my extended family, thank you for all the support, care packages, prayers, guidance, and love over all these years. I have always felt overwhelming support and love from you all, which is a big deal when you're sitting over in some third world armpit trying to figure out what you're doing there. So thank you again. So I'll tell you, when I was in 269, we got an unexpected deployment popped on us. We were out at ITX and we were told that not only were we going to have to deploy, but we would need to finish ITX first, go back home for about 10 days, then get on a plane and leave for an undetermined amount of time. This was going to be my 10th deployment and the 6th since I was married. Telling my family over the phone from 29 Palms that I was going to have to come home in three weeks and deploy again, that was tough. There was initially silence while the news set in, and to me, it lasted a lifetime. Looking back, I think I've pinpointed that moment as to when I knew I needed to change. Up until then, I had spent my entire career doing everything I needed to do to put myself into a position to be able to go as high on the ladder as I could. But, but I lost the fuel for the fire that day. I'll be the first to admit, when I got back, I based my career decisions off of what would keep me home. I wanted to be at football practices, baseball games, Christmases, holidays, birthdays. If I could still serve in the Marine Corps and do that, then fine. If not, then I could and would walk away. Now, this is generally frowned upon in my peer group, because you're supposed to be all, yeah, yeah, ready to go, sir, sure, be a geo bachelor, no problem, see bags packed, sir, oh, another deployment, sign me up. Let me let you in on a little secret. The Corps will use you up until you've got nothing left, then toss you aside and get someone else to keep the train moving. And I've been around long enough to know when you're gone, your name gets scraped from the sign, your picture comes down, and it's Sweeney who? And believe me when I say that I'm perfectly fine with it being it that way. It should be that way. It has to be that way. That's why we're so successful. But it just wasn't me anymore. I stayed longer than I should have for selfish reasons, but I'm going to stop short of apologizing for it. And if you got an issue with that approach, I'd still slap resumes down and see service deployment ribbons against yours. And when you're done admiring mine, you can bend down and kiss my ass. The Sweeney Boys? <laughs> I'm glad you asked. But first, is there a more perfect song for an often gone dad and his kids than this? I can't think of one. Man, I can only pray that my boys are around their kids more than I was for them. They sacrificed a lot. Constantly moving, having to make new friends, new schools. I lived that life growing up, and it's tough. They never missed a beat, though. They are some great kids and never complained. Thank you, boys. Daddy loved you. My son turned ten just the other day. He said, thanks for the ball, Dad. Come on, let's play. Can you teach me to throw? I said, not today. I got a lot to do. He said, that's okay. And then he walked away, but his smile never did. It said, I'm gonna be like him. Yeah, you know I'm gonna be like him. Well, that about covers it. Thanks for letting me tell my story. And if you were a part of it, it is with my deepest thanks for helping me get to this point. I'm looking forward to what the next chapter brings. It probably won't be as hectic or adventurous, but that's fine. I've had plenty of both. And if you're ever in Ohio, you're always welcome to come on out to the ranch. We can sit down by the fire near the pond, and I'll tell you some real stories that 
probably aren't appropriate for this video. What? You think I forgot? You think I forgot about the most important thing? The real reason I've been able to make it this far? No way. How could I ever forget about her? This is Rachel Ann Sweeney. And she's quite literally an angel sent down from heaven to bless any that came into contact with her. I mean, how else could you explain the absolute perfection that is her? We've been married for over 21 years, and I will tell you I am crazier about her today than I was yesterday. This woman has sacrificed so much, keeping our home, raising our four beautiful children, handling all the bills and being the only class and grace in a house full of knuckle draggers. And she did it all mostly single-handedly. I sat and did the math once. And to my closest guess, my wife has spent over 1,700 days in the last 21 years without me there. 1,700 days. Six deployments, three bridge ports, five CAXs, four EMVs, two MU workups, field ops, TAD trips, and yet she has never wavered. She is one in a billion. And I'm not sure what I ever did to get into God's good graces for him to continue to bless me like this. <laughs> but buddy, I'll take it. I would not have had my career without her unwavering support and I'm going to spend the rest of my life making it all back up to her. I love you, baby. Thanks for everything. Wait for me, wait for me. I'll be coming home. Wait for me. All right, enough of this yakking. I got the rest of my life to live. If y'all ever need anything, I won't be too hard to find. Come on, baby. Let's get out of here. Oh, when my thoughts escape at home, when my music's playing at home, when my love lies waiting silently for me. Silently for me.